Shri Rapax is a new dromaeosaur, a raptor-type dinosaur from Mongolia, and it would have actually been a velociraptorine, meaning it was closely related to Velociraptor. However, it wasn't an exact copy. In fact, it seems like even more than Velociraptor, Shri Rapax was better adapted to hunt larger prey. This is already well after the incredible fighting dinosaur specimen has been found, which preserves a Velociraptor interacting with the Protoceratops. It's been interpreted as a predation attempt, which was then interrupted by a dune collapse, which rapidly covered both, and this seems to kind of be one of the main methods of preservation in the Gobi Desert Cretaceous Rocks. Essentially, there's dunes that just collapse on animals, and fortunately we're able to get fossils from that. Now, I said interacting, but it does seem like it was likely a predation attempt, based on the fact that it seems like the Protoceratops is actually trying to bite onto the arm of the Velociraptor, and the Velociraptor has one of its claws well into the chest of the Protoceratops. And yet, as I said, Shri Repax may have been even more adapted to feeding on those larger prey, and that's down to a few key traits. First, digit one, which is our thumb, our first finger, and not necessarily a thumb in Shri, would have been larger and more robust than what's seen in other dromaeosaurs, even much larger dromaeosaurs like Utah Raptor, at least when the relative size of each of these animals is considered. Utah Raptor would have had an overall larger digit one, but Utah Raptor was also about the size of a bear, whereas Shri was about the size of a coyote. So they're very different scales for each of these animals, and again, for its size, Shri had a very well developed digit one. Additionally, when compared to Velociraptor, the skull is pretty different, and to be clear, it wouldn't have been quite this bulldog short-faced as it appears in this fossil. That's because part of the premaxilla of Shri Rapax is missing, and for context, here's the skull of Velociraptor, and you can see the premaxilla here, which extends down over the skull to kind of make the tip of the snout. However, it is still clearly a very different shape from Velociraptor, despite Shri being found as the sister genus to Velociraptor mongoliensis. There's also Velociraptor molskae, but there's going to be a lot of taxonomic change-ups in this group pretty soon, based on a lot of the evidence that I've seen presented at various conferences. But these differences, and the fact that Velociraptor was also found likely hunting Protoceratops, speaks to what kind of might be just a very common mistake in paleontology, which is suggesting that its niche partitioning is what's allowing all of these different theropods to have lived alongside one another, that they're doing very, very different things, so it's totally okay, which when you look at modern ecosystems doesn't really make sense. For example, in modern savanna ecosystems, you have hyenas and lions and leopards and painted dogs, which may all have different hunting strategies, but they're oftentimes hunting basically the same thing. There's not a niche which is different as far as their role in the ecosystem. They're overlapping a lot in their role. One important thing to remember in ecology is that individuals of a single species also experience competition from other members of that species, not only from different species. And there's actually been a lot of research on this using bacteria, which, hey, if we have one resource that we know both of these bacteria exist off of, we can put them both into a vial and see if they outcompete one another. And it turns out that they do a lot of the time, but if they're actually experiencing more competition from members of their own species than from other species, they will coexist perfectly happily. And that's really interesting to think of. You would expect, oh no, one of them is going to drive the other to extinction. That's not the case. Using an example near me, coyotes and Mexican gray wolves basically eat the same things. Sure, the wolves can eat slightly larger things when they get that opportunity, but jackrabbits, deer, and pronghorn are all pretty basic parts of the diets of both. But the wolves have more competition within their own species as far as fighting for territory and having the resources to raise their young than they actually have with the coyotes. So essentially you have these two animals that are very similar, that use very similar resources, but they're competing more with one another than they are with each other. And thinking of where these animals live, you can also throw mountain lions in there. And that's another example of a large carnivore using similar prey resources, but competing more with other mountain lions than they are with the wolves or the coyotes. Velociraptor could presumably hunt things like Protoceratops, but Shri was better suited to it. So Shri would have experienced more competition from other Shri than from any individual of Velociraptor. And that's a fairly basic principle of ecology, and one which paleontologists seem to forget about in favor of complete niche partitioning in many of these taxa. And so yeah, we're just starting to get much better pictures of what's happening with ecology. And Shri Rapax is one great example of how we need to consider all of the possibilities instead of just going for the simplest and most clear narrative.